Hello my Sock Universe, time to wrap up the September international break. I am giving a debut to the all red Denmark jersey, the red out jersey, which when I look at it now on my camera, it's really, it's an all red jersey. So I'm still not so sold on this red out, black out, white out jerseys. On the other hand, I know this is a very special jersey and that's why I have it and I'm happy to have it. I'm wearing Denmark because, let's face it, Denmark have been brilliant uh, and are at the moment even the most uh, likely team to qualify. Uh, and have, having said that, ta -da, here are the 13 teams currently odds on to qualify for Qatar in 2020. In case you don't see that red jersey up here, that's Russia and back there is uh, Switzerland. I think the rest is uh, rather well visible. Um, in case you are wondering, I explained once again, Denmark is number one, two, three to England, then we go four right here with France, Germany, Portugal, Italy, then Spain is eight, and then we'll start here, Croatia, nine, Netherlands, ten, da, 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 and so on and so forth. Just in case you have not been watching my videos. Now, I want to briefly summarize uh, what was happening uh, in the sense that we're going to look at the expected standings or how things might uh, pan out, who is favored, what are, where are, where is each group standing in a way, and that will make probably then uh, an overall, uh, gives us an overall picture on uh, World Cup qualifying. I will also then at the very end uh, reveal the winners and the losers of this um, international window because some teams have made really good progress and some teams have just stood still and we need to honor and uh, mention either of these two. I would say let's get started with uh, group A and you know I will be switching back and forth now between expected and uh, Kirkers and we'll first talk Kirkers and group A. We have Portugal just two points ahead of Serbia, both level on points. Uh, so it seems kind of close, but you already seen the chances for qualifying 90% for Portugal 40 only for Serbia Portugal has a home game coming up against Serbia. So that's uh, a big one there And if we go to the expected standings, you see that Portugal is so much higher rated that uh, they Are odds on to go through. Yes, they had a little um, setback with the draw against Ireland at home. However, Portugal also only drew Ireland and that's how it goes. The most remarkable part is that Luxembourg is still very much ahead of Ireland, although Ireland now picked a point, <laughs> another point uh, against Serbia. Probably should have gotten one against Portugal. It's still Luxembourg. Uh, odds on the finish third kind of shows you how bad Ireland at the moment is, which is a little bit sad. The most roller coaster group in this uh, was, of course, Group B, where at the moment we have Spain four points ahead of Sweden, um, with Sweden having two games in hand. So Sweden, with uh, those lost points, is still ahead of Spain. However, Spain has a home field advantage against Sweden, and that's why Spain has it very much in their own hands. And that's why, if we go expect the standings, and also uh, here you see they're very much also favorites to qualify. Very interesting is the graph of how things have, prim, have been progressing that you, you, you can see after Sweden beat Spain and most importantly, first World Cup qualifying loss over 60 games for Spain since 93. Sweden were thoroughly in control of the group, had a game off. Spain won the remaining two and Sweden lost to Greece and now we're back almost to square one. I mean, there's not much change. Spain increased a little bit. Sweden also slightly increased, but you know that the gulf between those two switched twice completely around and now Spain is in control of this group again, but it will be a tight one. And I think Greece has been giving both teams trouble already, uh, taking points, so uh, nothing out there is a given. And also the other teams are always capable. I mean, Spain's win against Kosovo um, yesterday was not a comfortable one. Group C is a two-way race between Italy and Switzerland. Uh, with all due respect to the other teams, those two are the class of the, of, of, of the group. And yesterday with Switzerland losing points in Northern Ireland, Italy very much set. Now it 
probably can, will, might come down to the home game Italy against Switzerland, where um, I think whoever wins that one will go through. A draw, I don't think that Italy may have, want to have, have, a, have a draw because you have the last game in Northern Ireland. I think if I was Italy, you should beat Northern Ireland any day of the week. There's no question about that. However, uh, especially in November and, you know, as an Austrian, we have had many bad results there late and so on. You never know. The weather might get, uh, might get ugly and so on and so forth. Wrap it up before. That's all I'm saying. You don't, uh, you need to, if Italy wins the next game against Switzerland, everything should be done and does be goal because goal difference is so much in favor of Italy. Could be done even before that if Switzerland doesn't pick quicker points, but you know, they have uh, rather manageable games coming up. But Italy, the class of this group, you see two and a half points expected going forward. So that seems rather comfortable. Moving on to Group D. Uh, this could be a much, much tighter group, but you see it with Ukraine. Ukraine sitting in second place with five draws. Way too many. Finland, with a game less, has a better chance of qualifying. Yes, because they will be ahead of U U Ukraine. Finland has lost to France, whereas Ukraine twice drew France. This is what hampers uh, Ukraine. If Ukraine could get wins, they could have put a lot of pressure on France. If Ukraine win uh, in Kazakhstan, if uh, Ukraine win against Bosnia, if Ukraine win against Finland, Ukraine is right up there with France. And we'll be talking a neck-to-neck -neck race, but as it stands, France cruising to the World Cup. Uh, they just need to maybe bag one or two more wins and it's done. So uh, rather, it shouldn't be, but it's rather straightforward for France, despite only three draws. But you see the expected standings, you see um, there is the two draws where I said they're drifting. You kind of see it going, going down and now they had the win again against Finland. It's almost certainty that they are at the next World Cup. Belgium. A straight lineup. A straight lineup. Yes, they had one draw, but ever since, I mean, the big win against the Czechs, Belgium is more or less at the World Cup with 99% per, per, per percent. Wales having dropped points yesterday as well uh, did not really help. The Czechs at the moment are ahead of Wales. However, Wales with the home. Uh, no, they don't even have a home game. They have an away game to the Czechs, but they're still a little bit um, higher rated than the Czechs currently. So yeah, it's uh, back and forth there. Uh, Wales still has to play Belgium though. So gotta see. Uh, that will be a neck to neck. There will be a head to head coming coming up. Wales holding a uh, have have gotten a win in the first game. So this second game will is actually a big one going that. Group F, everyone thought will be a tight one. No, Denmark hasn't even conceded a goal yet. Denmark have been simply outstanding. There is nothing else I can say. Denmark have been absolutely outstanding in this group. Um, and except for Scotland, everyone has gotten a beating from them uh, so far. And I, th I think even the Scotland result wasn't that tight. Uh, Denmark is at the moment on... I don't want to say best Denmark team ever because they had some great teams, but Denmark is at a level that we haven't seen in a very, very, very long time. Um, so, I mean, the semifinals were not a fluke. Yes, they had a comfy draw. Let's, put, uh, let's uh, not kid ourselves. But it was still, I think it was not a fluke that Denmark is that big. I think Denmark is definitely, I would say, top eight nation easily in Europe at the moment. The way they're, that they're playing, maybe even higher. Uh, cruising through the group. Now, you would expect by pure talent uh, that Austria should be second. No, they're currently fourth because you lose to Israel, you lose to, Sco lose to Scotland. Uh, there's no chance. The only chance why Austria, why Austria is still ahead of everyone else in qualifying for the World Cup. And that uh, same thing is true for Wales and the Czechs. Those three teams are very likely in the playoffs. And that helps them big time because uh, they won their Nations League. I think it's uh, Wales, Austria and the Czechs in that order. So if the four uh, group winners from the Nations League qual uh, qual qualify, which is uh, France, Belgium, Italy and Spain, very likely as we have seen already, uh, then Wales and the Czechs, one of them will finish second. So it's Austria and the other team 
uh, out of the auto, the, the, the student they had to go to the playoffs, and that's why Austria still is hanging hang out there. But uh, they, Austria barely has a shot at a second spot anymore. This is how bad it has gotten. So yeah, that group is done. Another is, is done. The next two that we'll look at are much, much, much tighter. Uh, group G. At the moment, it's a head-to-head -head between Netherlands and Norway with Turkey lingering background. I think Montenegro is, uh, has been knocked out with uh, losses, uh, now especially against the Netherlands. So um, it is Netherlands, Norway, Turkey, a three-way race. Given the quality in the squad and what the Dutch have been showing, the Netherlands should actually win this group rather comfortably. However, we gotta see. Uh, going for or uh, going, going forward at the moment, 7722% is a pretty good chance. Norway have to go to the Netherlands and potentially a draw is enough because goal to difference speaks very much in favor of the Dutch. And Norway and Turkey have to still play, so uh, must win for both of them to have a chance for second spot. Uh, if you want to win the group, no, it's a must win for Norway as well. You see, Turkey have been losing ever since. They had that one, uh, I think a draw at home to Latvia, then they had another draw against Montenegro, then, you know, it has not been going well for Turkey at all, ever since the start of the qualification campaign, and you put the Dutch very much back on track. Um, the group H at the moment is Croatia, Russia, also neck to neck with Croatia holding the slimmest of margins in goal difference. And it could very well come down to that. Slovakia may be lurking behind. I think Slovenia is out of, out of it. I, I, I don't even give much uh, chance to Slovakia because the gap is already considerable. But they, they both can play potential spoilers. But I think it will come down to Croatia, Russia, and as I said say before, Croatia, Russia, I have yet to uh, determine a winner between the two of them. So unless there's a winner in probably Zagreb, I have to say that it will come down to goal difference between those two, uh, or unless they um, uh, stumble along along the way. Croatia still seems to be the most stable, stable team in the seed here in the development. Croatia is steadily going up with Russia kind of a little bit going sideways, so you would expect Croatia a little bit more. Group I, um, almost like Denmark, England toying with this group. Uh, you know, that draw against Poland was, yes, it was, you had the win and you, uh, you uh, got a can't consider last minute equalizer, but to, to, to be honest, Anything but, 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 but loss was a win for England. You just need to pick up six points in the home games against Andorra and San Marino and you're through. It's that simple. So uh, there's not much trouble coming and you can... I, England is through. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they are 98, 98%. It is a three-way race for third, where I would strongly favor Poland just um, because of the quality of their squad in there. Then the last group we'll talk about is of course the Germany group uh, where uh, before it looked like maybe there's some trouble but you know Germany was always going to be the class of, of, of this group because the other teams are simply not that good. Armenia barely hanging on to a second spot but you already see it in the gold the, the difference how uh, how Georgia will knock them back with a 6-0 win. Romania and North Macedonia just cannot find really wins, although North Macedonia has one against Germany. Romania doesn't look so. If I look here at expected standings, I mean, Germany looks very, very, very solid in this group. Also, uh, rather cruising, and even that one loss looks fine for, 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 for them. Romania currently just ahead of Armenia. But I think any of these three can still make uh, the playoff spot. Speaking of which, I already explained the situation for the playoff spot. Um, so you see uh, Austria and Czech, Czech probably because Wales is uh, there in second, uh, second place of their group. At the moment, it will be the Sweden, Russia and Serbia, the top seeds, Switzerland, Wales and Poland, the next. And then uh, the unseeded teams, Norway, Scotland, Romania, Finland, Austria and the Czechs. Uh, it is not an easy path. I think the playoffs are a chance, but as in comparison to what we had for the Euros, this is a much more loaded uh, bracket where I think teams, 
it w I think there could well spring there could be a surprise because European national teams are that level. But I I, I would say if I was uh, for instance Sweden should make it through. I would say even Switzerland, and then yeah, you never know what Serbia is gonna throw at you. Uh, there it, it just many 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 things can happen there. So to end this video, um, I would say let's reveal the top ten losers, and I'll uh, say and how much uh, percent chance they have lost during those last three match days. We have uh, Switzerland and Iceland barely making the cut. At number 10, we have Montenegro with minus 7.26%. Then Ukraine, only draws will not get it far, minus 7.69. At number 8, we have Slovenia, minus 8.85. Wales has lost 10.01. Um, percent points and then North Macedonia 10.87 also not getting wins so we are now in the top five and for me a little bit too low number five is Austria with 12.06 percent points lost probably because Denmark was already quite ahead but you know it is a big loss um, Slovakia 12.82 yep Armenia 15.4, Hungary 18.53, and you can guess who the biggest loser was. By far, the biggest loser of these three is Turkey, with 20, minus 25.9% chance lost of qualifying for the World Cup. Now, on the positive side, uh, Romania and uh, then France barely make me cut at number 10 with Russia with 4.72%, one, not too much. Italy also just a little bit one at number 9, 88.41. Norway over 10%, 10.41 10 for this is down also to Turkey going down. Uh, Denmark, they were already high, so only 10.95% one is not too much. And similar, you can say for Belgium at now number six, 11.04, and Portugal at 11.55. England have made a bit, they played their two big, biggest rivals and got uh, points out of them away from home, so 14.19%. Also, goals in this category, you were already high, and now you even push it even further. However, the three biggest winners in order, and they are all over 20% Croatia, 20.98%. Pretty big win for them. Wins over Slovakia, wins over Slovenia, and a draw is to Russia. I think it's a very credit, credit, credit window. These were three triple games that Croatia managed quite well. As I said, it might come down to goal difference, but I've, I would trust Croatia to go through. And then the Dutch. At number two, 22.51%, not higher because it's still kind of a three-way race. So um, there might be a little bit trouble. The winner, Germany, 25.58% gain. Uh, you beat the closest competitor, you build go up goal difference. You can cruise now to the World Cup and maybe go for a title win even there. So yeah, that's it for the international break in September. We have the next one at the beginning of October. I'm actually looking forward to that because, to be honest, I really like how uh, the pace is a little bit slower for me making the videos and also for watching games. It's not so all full on. Uh, it's yeah, 8, 4, 4, 4, 4, 5 in the, in, in, in the evening and if I have some luck I, I get a little bit of the early evening games. So I actually like the pace. Uh, the next international break, as I said, will also feature the final four of the Nations League in Italy, which will be very exciting. Uh, as far as I know, the semifinals were uh, Spain against Italy, so uh, rematch from the semi-final at the Euros and at the time of, of, of the road this was the number three against the number four for team. How things have changed in Belgium against France, uh, two disappointing teams at the Euros for the second final, final spot. So that might also be very interesting. I still would tip France to win that one because I think they have quite some stuff to prove. So maybe get, get the title, but Italy at home, maybe we'll see. That will be also exciting. So yeah, as I said, that's coming up from uh, for the next international break. Exciting, I have to say. As I said, I really do not hate the international break and I always love to get my national team jerseys out. And yeah, there we go. Let me know what you think about where the groups will, will be going, where you agree or dis disagree with me. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. 
Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my SOFA universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.